What's going on guys? I am the Walrus Jedi and in today's video we are ranking the villains of Star Wars. Well, 10 of them anyway. Um, about a month ago did the heroes, so I thought today we would do the villains. And that, you know, there will be some spoilers, but it'll be light spoilers for, you know, various books and video games, TV shows and that. But it, it's not going to be heavy spoilers, but there will be some minor spoilers, but it, it's mainly going to be for older stuff like movies. So um, before going any further, uh, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more Star Wars videos like rankings. Uh, thanks, and now on to the list. Number 10. Uh, coming in at the bottom spot is Darth Malak from the video game Knight of the Old Republic, or KOTOR. Uh, this Sith Lord, he's a for former Jedi and Revan's Sith Apprentice. He is a human with a cybernetic jaw, and he he's this low because while he's an interesting character, uh, he just doesn't wow me it really in appearance or character. Like, you know, he's cool, but, you know, Revan's obviously more... He takes the center stage, but Malak is still cool. Number nine. Um, next uh, is Cad Bane, the Duros bounty hunter from Star Wars The Clone Wars, the, t the TV show. Uh, he has style and... You know, he's a capable bounty hunter and even uh, cruel. He, he, in my opinion, he's one of those bounty hunters that I would say is not, like, I don't think he would work for the Republic or for the good guys. I think he's, he's too, he's too amoral to work on, to work for them. You know, some bounty hunters are not villains, but Cad Bane, I think, is pretty dang close to we always see him, he's working, you know, he's working for the Huts, but then he's also working for Darth Sidious, and in my opinion, you know, and plus, you know, so, but yeah, I mean, he's cool, so. Number eight, coming in at eighth, is uh, Jabba the Hutt, you know, seen in Return of the Jedi. Uh, he is a cool-looking alien, and I, I like Aliens in Star Wars and cool, awesome-looking aliens are awesome. Uh, you know, and he has a fantastic design, specifically in Return of the Jedi. I'm a fan of the puppet Jabba the Hutt. The CGI ones, they're okay, but again, I prefer the the puppet. You know, I think it just it looks cool. Um, you know, and he's here because you know Sith are my favorite kinds of bad guys in Star Wars. But Jabba the Hutt, you know, he's cool, he's unique. He managed to get in the top ten even though he's not a Sith. Number seven. In seventh is another non-Sith character, Jango Fett. You know, he's a Mandalorian bounty hunter, and he is the template for the clone army. And, you know, seen in Attack of the Clones. And, you know, the, the video game Star Wars Bounty Hunter, um, which is a cool game. Uh, you know, he wore his silver Beskar armor and, you know, it, like his son, used a jetpack. And in my opinion, this guy, he looks cool and he does some awesome things in Attack of the Clones, Bounty Hunter and that, you know. Uh, I And plus, I like the look of his armor more than Boba Fett. But also, Jango Fett, he has more plates on him. J Boba Fett doesn't have as much. He's missing... Uh, more of his armor. Uh, it's very, very basic. So, you know, and Django is in this position. Uh, you know, again, he's not a Sith. He's still so cool. He's he's my favorite bounty hunter. So, yeah. Number six uh, is uh, Yoda's fallen apprentice, Count Dooku, or Darth, Darth Tyrannus, seen in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars. Uh, this Count from Sereno, you know, he's the leader of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, or the CIS. And, you know, he trains Asajj Ventress and General Grievous, and, you know, the use of the lightsaber and that. Um, this guy, 
I mean, if you really sit down and think, like, in the movies, what does this guy do? He doesn't do a whole lot, but, I mean, come on. People like Count Dooku because he's played by Christopher Lee. And, you know, Christopher Lee, you know, usually always played villains. And, you know, he's in Star Wars. He's a villain. He's cool. Yeah, plus, you know, he's got a curved lightsaber. He, he's just cool, you know. He can use lightning. This this guy's cool. Number five. Coming in at the middle is the Chiss Grand Admiral Thrawn, or, you know, to use his full name, Mithra Nerudo. He's from, you know, the Heir to the Empire novel and its other sequels. You know, and he's also in the, the canon Thrawn books and in Star Wars Rebels. And we're going to see him in the Ahsoka show, so that is fantastic. This this blue-skinned alien, you know, he's a Grand Admiral in the Empire and uh, perhaps the greatest tactician in Star Wars. His only weakness is uh, that he's very bad at politics. He doesn't understand all the political stuff. But still, th this guy, he is so, so awesome. And I'll just be honest, I... I don't foresee this guy going lower on the list. I think he'll go up. I think once I... Because I haven't read Heir to the Empire yet, uh, but I, I will. I'm looking forward to that day when I finally get around to it. And again, I think Thr Thrawn's going to go up. He's probably going to go up at least a spot or two. Number four. In the fourth spot is the founder of the Rule of Two, Darth Bane. He is in the, you know, Darth Bane trilogy of books. Uh, this human Sith Lord was willing to learn from ancient Sith while his peers at the Academy forsaken the ancient texts that, you know, using his curved hilt for his lightsaber and, you know, Form 5, you know, he was a formidable opponent. Again, why this guy became the Sith Lord is because he didn't ignore the texts. And that's what set him apart from the other ones and why he was able to become the Sith Lord. Um, plus, you know, this this guy, he's a badass. There's no other way to say it. This guy, is, uh, if you have not read the Darth Bane stuff, please read it. And uh, now all I'm going to do some honorable mentions. Uh, first up, General Grievous, the Kalish Cyborg General of the Droid Army. Asajj Ventress, the Dathomirian Force Adept, who desires to be Dooku's Sith Apprentice. And Boba Fett, the son of Mandalorian bounty hunter Jango Fett. Uh, number three uh, in this slot is, you know, the fallen chosen one, Darth Vader. Uh, you know, he's in the original trilogy. So uh, this human Sith Lord... You know, that was a cyborg, you know, wears a black suit full of cybernetics, uh, keeping him alive due to, you know, his loss on Mustafar to his former master, uh, Obi-Wan. You know, he this guy, he, he has an intimidating height, you know, deep voice, uh, the breathing, you know, and ju just being in his presence could knock someone unconscious. You know, just being in the, like, again, if Darth Vader walked around because i'm sure you know if you you go to a convention or whatever you see a darth vader that's really good that's tall that has the presence even though obviously the the guy in the suit isn't going to be like evil or whatever it's still going to be a little intimidating that they you know they designed a really cool suit back you know then so number two uh in the penultimate spot is the zabrick darth maul you know, seeing Phantom Menace in the Clone Wars, you know, having been cut in half by Obi-Wan, you know, he came back for revenge and started a criminal empire, you know, known as the Shadow Collective. Uh, later it got called, you know, Crimson Dawn. But I mean, this guy, he's like, normally I, I am totally against bringing back dead characters, but they brought him back and they actually did something with, with his character. They didn't just waste him and you know, he's wait. No, he's like, I mean, you had the revenge against Obi-Wan, uh, which was cool. Plus he starts this criminal empire. Like, yes, er everything, everything about 
this character in Clone Wars, I, I love. I love. Uh, it is a shame that he's dead, because I, I would have liked more. But, you know, I guess he had to die at some point. Number one, you know, uh, the top spot, it's, uh, you know, the Senate himself, uh, Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine or Chancellor Palpatine, you know, you know, he's seen in the entire saga, Clone Wars, uh, this, this guy, you know, you know, from Naboo, you know, he's trained by Darth Plagueis and, you know, he, he's, he, he's probably the only other character more intimidating than Darth Vader in universe in universe um this guy pure evil no redeeming qualities whatsoever um that's part of why i think he's he he's cool as a villain um sometimes it's cool to just have a villain that's you know evil just for evil's sake that doesn't mean every villain should be that way but sometimes this guy's just evil because you know wants power and all that classic villain stuff this guy's cool, you know, the, the lightning and, uh, yeah. Shame that he doesn't lightsaber fight very much because when he does, it's pretty cool. But I guess that's part of what makes those few occasions when he does engage in lightsaber combat really memorable and stand out because he doesn't do it very often. They completely wasted this, this character in Rise of Skywalker. I would have... I would have much preferred he stayed dead because they didn't give an explanation of how he came back. Just somehow he, he did. And then he dies by getting the lightning reflected back at him from Ray. Yay. Well, this is the top 10. Uh, what is your top 10 of the villains? Like, how, what would you rank? You know, did I, did I forget a character that maybe is your favorite? Um, would you like to see a top 10? 50 Star Wars character ranking uh, tell me in the comment section down below uh, and please take a moment to like and subscribe and until next time thanks for watching